Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and it's a beautiful sunny day today here in the Hunter Valley in Australia and I'm just heading down to the dam. I was there late yesterday afternoon doing a few jobs and I just want to show you what it looks like this morning. Just having a look at the dam now and it's going really well so far this season. It hasn't had any of the regrowth of the red azola that I've had in the last couple of years. I've just been putting a little bit of the surface clear treatment on it about every six to eight weeks and that I think has actually helped clean the dam up. It looks uh, very nice so far. Now if you've been watching the videos on the channel you will know that I have a mini excavator, a UHI UME 12 mini excavator and when I bought my mini excavator it came with nine attachments or implements and today what I want to do is talk about those attachments that I use a lot and those that I've never used. Now in front of me I've laid out the attachments that came with my machine. Now when I bought my machine in 2021 I paid 16,500 Australian dollars and it came with these nine included attachments and out of all of these attachments there are some that I've used a lot but there are two that I've never used. Okay, I'll briefly talk about each of the items and the first one is the auger drive that I have here and the auger motor. Now, I love this thing. It spends a lot of the time in the machine. I use it for digging deep holes, for putting new trees into and for also fence posts and corner posts and putting gate posts in. Um, I love it. It gets a big green tick from me. The next one along here is the 8 inch or the 200 mil bucket. This spends most of the time in the machine. I put a lot of poly pipe in the ground which is uh, for carrying water plus a lot of electrical conduit so certainly this gets a lot of use. This, this certainly gets a big green tick for me, it's a very popular bucket. The next one is a bucket that I don't use very much, it's a 400 millimetre wide bucket that's got teeth on it and I have used it, I'll still give it a green tick, I used it a bit on the uh, French drain project in some of the harder ground. Most of the ground here is pretty soft clay so I don't tend to use it a lot but certainly I do use it. Next to it is a 500 mil what I call a gummy bucket. So a gummy bucket is a bucket without teeth on it and I've used this a lot in that French drain project in the soft clay. Certainly this gets a big green tick from me. Okay let's come down the front. Now this is one of the items that I've never used and I probably to be honest don't even know how it goes onto the machine this is a log grapple and they include this as part of the attachments and I'm sure for some people it's probably great and they use it a lot but for me here I have never used it it's never been on the machine we don't do a lot of timber work where we need to lift logs or I don't have a sawmill yet so this is a probably a red X for me I don't use this one the one next to it is, they call it a stick rake, but for me, I have actually used this on the digger quite a bit, and I use it on my gravel driveways to scrape through the gravel to break the gravel up before I re-roll it. So certainly I have used this on the machine, and I do like it, so I will give this one a big green tick as well. Next to it is the 800 mil mud bucket. Now this is great for moving a lot of volume of soil because of the size of the bucket. I've used this a lot on the machine. Um, it's certainly a worthwhile bucket and it gets a big green tick from me. Now the final item that I have never used, so this is a big red X for me that I've never used so far, is this single tine ripper. And you'll see that I haven't even got pins in here to attach it to the machine because I've never used it. I've never had it on the machine and I've often wondered what you use it for and I guess for people that have maybe rocky ground for digging out rocks something like that it may be useful but today I want to change that I actually do have a project that I want to use this single time ripper on I have a couple of small uh, tree roots that I've got in the ground that just get in the way from when I'm mowing the grass that I want to try and dig it out so I'm going to try and use this today this is one particular tree stump that I have to get out. I don't think I'm going to tackle this one today. It's um, quite a large one. It's been in the ground for a long time and it may even be a bit too big for my mini excavator to tackle. Maybe not, um, 
but I'm not going to try this today. But it will need to come out at one point because I am going to put a concrete slab down the side of this shed here and I am going to extend the awning or the roof line out a bit and have another undercovered area there to store equipment. So that is going to happen at some stage, but um, yeah, I think for today I might leave this one. Okay, so this is one of the ones I want to try and get into today. So this is not so much a tree root, but it's an old stump of a tree that was here many years ago. And I did have a go at this when I first got my digger, but I didn't have much luck with it. You can see across here, there's a big tap root that's running across there. Um, anyway, I'm going to try my single tine ripper to try and break this up and see if I can get this out because it's right in an area where I'm always trying to mow the grass on the zero turn and I end up sort of running into this. It's a, a real pain and as well as that one, I've got another couple over here. So I've got a smaller one here which I'm going to try and get out and up here there are two more which I'd like to take out as well. So there's one here which is uh, sort of a medium sized thing. I haven't tried to take this one out yet and also another one over here. Now if I can get these out and take all the stump out of the ground, it'll make that really nice there that I can get my mower in here and I can uh, mow right up to the fence. It just At the minute, it's just a real pain. They're just in the way, so they need to come out. Now another question I get asked quite often is, is it worth paying a little bit extra when I buy my digger to buy the implement package? And my response I think would probably be yes, I think it is good value. So let's look at this. You would probably spend maybe two to three thousand dollars extra to include the nine attachments on the top of the basic price of buying a digger. Now, long term, I think that does represent good value. For example, if I bought the basic digger and I decided sometime later that I wanted to buy an auger drive motor and an auger bit because I wanted to put fence posts in. Now, I priced last year at a field days a auger drive motor and a drill bit to suit my machine from a third party supplier and the cost was about four and a half thousand dollars. So that was a lot of money. Now, you may be in the situation like me, you may spend that extra money when you buy the package and there may be one or two items here that you'll never use, but I th certainly think longer term it does represent good value on buying the package. Now bearing in mind that having said that, there is a size limit to the digger that you can buy that includes these packages. And when I bought my digger, the 1.2 mach uh, ton machine was about the biggest that you could buy that included the nine implements. I do notice now that the uh, UHI people do do a 1.7 ton machine that includes a number of implements. And I also know that Achilles, which is a brand I have never tried or never used, but they're based up in Brisbane. I think they are in Queensland here in Australia. They also do a 1.7 ton machine that includes a number of implements. Now, anything above about 1.7 ton, you're not going to get the option to buy these as a package. If you go to a two ton machine, then you're getting into like the semi-professional type machines that will only be supplied with the three basic buckets and anything else you're gonna to have to pay for. Now I'm just putting a couple of pins in the single tine ripper because when I bought my package, with the implements, they were two pins short. So I've had to, if I use this, I'm going to have to swap around some pins, which as you can see, aren't going in all that easy. Very tight anyway. That's all right there. And uh, yeah, when I bought my digger, they counted out the number of pins and I was two pins short on the number of attachments I was supposed to get and uh, they did make note of it and said they would send uh, two extra pins up in the post which uh, is three years ago and I still haven't seen them. Now another question I get asked is I'm going to upgrade my mini digger can I keep my attachments and just buy a new machine and use my old attachments? And the answer to that is yes and no. 
So these attachments are a particular pin size. So for these smaller machines, I think it's less than about 1.5 ton is the pin size here is 25 millimeter or one inch pins. Now that size varies as you go up in size of digger. I think when you get to the, I know the two ton machine is 30 millimeters. Uh, the 1.7 ton machine I think is 30 millimeters. So if you say you had a one ton machine and you were going to buy a 1.2, then yes, you could probably hang on to your attachments and use them again. But if you were going from say a one ton machine to a two ton machine, then you wouldn't be able to use the same attachments because the pin sizes are a lot different. All right, I'm just gonna put this on now. I think they call it a semi-quick hitch. It's sort of a manual system. It's not something that you can do automatically from the operator's position, but it certainly is a lot quicker than, you know, knocking pins out and putting things on and re-putting pins in it. So, um, it's pretty quick. I have noticed just doing this now that I've lost my R clip that lives on the front here that I'll have to replace at some stage. But the other thing I use is when I tighten this up, I don't get it ultra tight. Um, I don't use it with a, a rattle gun or anything because uh, it doesn't need to be that tight. I just sort of get it there so it doesn't fall off. And uh, right, let's go and do some damage with that. Okay, well, I thought while we're actually traveling over to where I've got to dig these stumps out and even while we're working over there I thought I might just continue to answer a couple of questions that keep popping up on the uh, YouTube channel and one of the most popular ones I get asked is if you had your time again would you buy another Chinese mini excavator and yes I think I would but in saying that is you have to take a number of factors into account. For me, when I bought my mini excavator, I really had a limited budget. And yeah, if I had the money, I would probably go out and buy a, a cat or a bobcat or a JCB or something like that. But to buy the equivalent of what this machine is would have been exactly doubled. So instead of paying $16,500, I'd be looking at $32,000, $33,000 easy. And then I would have to buy the attachment package on top of all of that. So in my case, I had a budget and I didn't really want to go any more than uh, the 16 and a half grand. Because even so now, three years later, this machine that I'm on has done still less than 100 hours, so it hasn't done a lot of hours. And I was mindful that if I spent a lot of money and I didn't use the machine, then it's really just sitting around being underutilized but costing too much money. So would I buy another Chinese mini excavator? Yeah, I think I probably would. Another question is what size mini excavator should I buy? And I don't know if I can really answer that. Um, when I was looking for a machine, I first of all found the one ton machine, but then I didn't like the fact that it just had a single cylinder diesel engine in it. And I wanted something that I thought was a bit better than that. So I opted for the 1.2 ton machine that had the three cylinder Yanmar in it. But certainly that came at a price that probably cost me another five or six thousand dollars to buy the slightly bigger machine. What would I buy now if I had a choice? So after using the 1.2 ton machine for the last three years, if I upgraded to a machine and I'm not saying I will or I won't, but if I did upgrade then I would probably go up to a 1.7 ton machine or a two ton machine. Now I have looked at um, a couple of different brands. I've looked at the Sani 1.6, that's actually a 1.7, but that's another story. That looked to be quite a nice machine. It is still Chinese made, but the cost of that machine is you're jumping up to 
about $31,000. So it is a, a big jump to go into that next stage. And then I'm still faced with the same problem of, well, okay, I've gone up to a bigger machine. What implements now or attachments do I need to buy? And how much is that gonna cost? Okay, I'll just have a bit of a, a scratch around here and see what happens. Don't want to make a real big mess of it, but I'm going to have to uh, make a bit of a hole to get this stump out. This stump is probably the biggest out of the three or four I have to take out. So I'm just using the single time ripper here just to go down the side of it. And hopefully if there's any roots down there, it'll loosen those up a bit. I don't know if it's the ideal tool or attachment for this job, but I've never used it, so it'll be a good chance to, to put it to the test to see if, uh, see if it works. Now, if I was to buy a bigger machine, why would I buy a bigger machine? So my reasoning for that would be uh, a heavier machine is a bit more stable. And I haven't really had a problem with this machine being unstable. Um, sometimes if you are digging quite deep in a trench, uh, it would be good to have a slightly heavier machine. Uh, plus, the bigger machines have bigger uh, hydraulic pumps or the pumps have greater flow in it. The trouble with these smaller machines is on this particular one, I think it flows about 24 litres a minute. When you get up to the 1.7 or the two-ton machines, you're looking at something like 40 to 50 litres a minute, so probably two to two and a half times the capacity. So obviously the more litres you're running around on your pump, the better power you're gonna get out of the digger. Uh, what else would there be? Sometimes the uh, when you move up to a bigger machine, you get uh, better quality components. So the just reposition here a bit. Uh, you get better quality um, travel motors, for example. Now this machine I'm on here tops out at probably like a kilometre an hour. I think it is just under one k an hour. Whereas if you get the bigger machines, they have the a lot of them have the, the dual speed, so you've got a, a fast speed and a slow speed, and you can get up to like 3.8 kilometers an hour, which would be, it's not a necessity, but it'd be nice to have it for when you actually have to move to, you know, different parts on the property or something like that. It just makes it a little bit easier. Tines working all right. I don't know what you can see there. I'll give you another angle in a minute. Take you down the bottom there, but um, yeah, it's all right. It's uh, digging down through there. Can't really see a lot. Let's just give it a bit of a tug and see. I need to go on this side here somewhere. I mean this. Uh, tree root that's in here this is well and truly dead so it hasn't got a lot of uh, green matter in it at all anymore so I'm thinking all the roots would be quite rotten as well but there's one big tap root right out the front there which I'm trying to get into and I'm thinking I might not even get it with the the tine, I might have to get a chainsaw or something in there and just try and break that because I think that's going to be the the thing that's going to put it off. Let me just move around a bit more. Another question I get asked is should I buy a secondhand Chinese mini digger? And I would think that it would completely depend on the previous owner, how they've looked after it and what sort of work they've done with the machine. 
I'm very mindful when I'm using this machine that it's got a particular use and a particular limit that I get to where either the job's too difficult or the uh, ground is too hard or something that means that it's not worth pushing the mini digger anymore because something's going to break on it. So um, I'm quite mindful of, of that when I do projects that I don't bite off more than I can chew. So if you're buying one, what would you look for? Well, obviously the first thing is the number of hours. Um, where's it being used? Uh, does it look okay? What's the condition of it? One thing I have noticed with these machines are that they do uh, tend to rust. If you leave them outside, they will rust very quickly. So I'm quite mindful about keeping my machine under cover and then putting a rust protection on it every time I clean it or wash it to try and keep the rust off it. So what does the machine look like? Has it got low hours? Um, physical appearance actually will tell a lot about a machine. You know, what condition are the tracks in? Has, it, has the machine been used on stony ground? Are the tracks chewed up? Uh, what are the hoses like? Are the hoses perished? Are any of the hoses been replaced? Now, on this particular machine with the three-cylinder Yanmar, I'm quite confident that the um, engine would be fine because at the minute it's just idling along. I don't know if you can hear it in the background there. It's probably at a third throttle, something like that. And uh, so it's not overworking. The uh, machine that I've got here does actually have a temperature gauge. It is water cooled, obviously. So you can keep an eye on, oh, big snap there. You can keep an eye on um, the temperature of the engine and uh, if it's getting overheated or not. Oh, I think we've got it. So that was that big tap root up there, which I've managed to get out. That's pretty good. Might just give you another angle as we pull the last bit out here. Right, I've just got to make sure now that I don't hit the camera with my tine. So I've got one centre part of this left. What if I just go underneath it here and give it a bit of a... Oh yeah, look at that, it comes straight out. That was easy. So I should have done that years ago. I did try when I first got the digger to get this stump out and I think I had like the 500mm bucket on or something. It was completely the wrong bucket now, but I got it off the trailer when I first had it delivered and started digging around and uh, didn't have a clue what I was doing, so it was a little bit harder than that. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the bigger one out, so that's pretty good. We'll move on and uh, we'll do the smaller one. Right, I think I'll just uh, push some of this material back into the hole there. And uh, we'll be about done with this particular one. Another thing uh, people often ask is, uh, you know, what revs do I run my digger at? And we did a whole video on that, trying different revs to see what would uh, make a difference. And again, I guess it depends on what material you're working in, but I've always found, you know, using it about 30% throttle, something like that. And you can hear this machine now is really just idling away, but I'm not really uh, doing anything great with it. So it's just idling away and you can get them pretty smooth. It's really, I'd say it's like any machine that you're using. It just depends on how often you use it, getting used to it, 
getting used to the controls and um, as you saw when I was pulling that stump out you can get them to run pretty smooth you don't you know people say that the Chinese mini diggers are very jerky and hard to to drive and they probably are to a degree but really you just have to work with the machine and just find out what works and what doesn't work and it's different for everybody everybody's got different ways of using the machines and how they want to use the machine and what sort of material they're using the machine in so but um, I found you know normally uh, using the machines at lower revs will just suits me a lot lot easier I'm gonna have to get some fresh material and bring it in holes just a little bit too low just trying to be a bit careful when I'm pivoting it around to do a wide arc so I don't chew up the grass anyway let's head over and uh, we'll do this other little one over here in the corner I'm just mindful of the Back now that I'm working really close to my GoPro and what I was just talking about the smoothness of the controls you can actually get these things quite good if you just uh, you know take time to learn how to use the machine I want to go too close to my camera here see if I can actually come right down and maybe just give this a bit of a tug it might actually come out what do you think the chances are oh yeah there we are that's pretty good pretty fucking push that back in the hole maybe it's full of ants actually I can see it I don't know if you can see it on the camera but there's lots of ants coming out of there now it's a bit hard to push dirt in with a single time ripper but that'll do that one easy as I said these stumps have been uh, in the ground for a long time they are very rotted so it's probably easy to get them out all right let's just disappear up here and there's another slightly bigger one up here we've got to do okay stump number three just come down the side of it now interesting when I read the comments on the videos is there's always a couple of comments from people that will say something very generic like I wouldn't buy that Chinese crap and I appreciate everybody's got a right to an opinion and that's fine uh, you yourself have to make an opinion about whether you want to buy something or use something um, it's quite interesting when I read that sort of stuff and I feel I feel I don't respond to a lot of that sort of stuff I just let people make a comment and then just leave it but I I sometimes think well what I'd really like to say to them is you know you're probably watching this video on your TV in your lounge room and the TV probably is made in China you're probably typing the reply on your iPhone that is made in China and you're possibly going to go to work in a car that was made in China so I'm no advocate for China by any means but you know it's a big world it's made up a lot of different things and you know we have to uh, yeah either 
like it or don't like it, it's your own opinion. It's going to go to the last one here and see. Actually, after not using this single tine ripper for three years, I actually am quite enjoying using it actually. I think it's got got quite a good use now. I can see it'd be good for pulling rocks and things out. Uh, certainly it's doing a good job of going down these uh, these tree roots there. I don't know if this has got a tap root here. See if I can go right under it and come up from underneath here somewhere. Oh, here she comes. Look out, camera. It's coming straight towards you. Oh, just have to go back a little bit. Oh no. It's been a fall. So that one came out okay. That's a big a big root there. Yeah. Put that in the sun. Sort of see the size of that one. A couple of big roots there going under the ground, but I think that's got most of it there. I'll just uh, use the blade and just push a bit of that dirt back in and we should be right. Another one of the favorite comments that I often read on people's responses to videos is just a simple one-liner that says, it's better than using a shovel. And that's exactly right. I mean, it's a lot better than using a shovel. The amount of hours and time it would take to you know physically uh, if you had to dig a hole for a fence post uh, it, it takes a long time and a lot of effort to do that manually it's easy when you've got an auger and a auger bit to drill a hole uh, digging trenches putting water pipes in boy in this tough clay it would be really hard and take a long time to dig a trench and that French drain project that we've got the video on about that thing was 300 foot long and it was 500 mil so what's that uh, 16 17 inches or something deep now imagine trying to dig that by hand in wet clay it'd just be a nightmare so I I think the Chinese mini excavators really do have a place I understand it is something that people aren't going to use all the time, but it's a great, it's just another great tool to have. You won't use it every day, but it'll certainly make it a great day when you need to use one. Well, I've finally done it. I finally used my single tine ripper and I have to say it worked really well. I should have probably dug it out years ago and used it, but I'm very happy with the results that we got done with it today. And that only leaves one item now out of my nine implements that I haven't used, and that's the log grab. And I really don't think I'm going to use that unless I go down the path of buying a sawmill. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I do appreciate everybody watching the videos and leaving a comment. Please share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.